Hi everyone, we're so happy to be with you again this evening. We're thankful you've opened up your schedule a little bit to let us in and have a little bit of time together. Of course, we cannot wait until we're back together face to face again. But until then, we're grateful we have the technology, the opportunity to meet like this. Uh, this evening, Noah's going to bring us another wonderful devotional. He's been talking about joy the last couple of times, and today he's going to talk about how we have joy when we follow God's commands. And I also think he threw in a special game there, so be ready. Hope you're not too comfortable on your couches. So it'll be a good one today. And we're so thankful, like we say, for these opportunities. We ask you to please stay in touch. We'll do our best to get back to everyone who's reaching out to us. Uh, we're trying hard to do that, but just... Give us a call, send us a text or a message, and we'll be happy to respond as quick as possible. As we, before we begin, let me go ahead and start with a prayer, and then I'll hand it over to Noah and we can get started. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we are grateful for today. We ask you to continue to be with us and help us to see the positives in each day. Help us to grow in the ways you want us to grow in each day. Father, watch over us and our families. Protect us. Help us to be wise, help us to be smart, and help us to stay healthy. Father, we ask you to continue to help us as individuals, as your hands and feet, to remember that we are still there to help each other out, to help out our neighbors and our community who may need us. Help us to see those opportunities and to work at them, Father. And we're grateful that you give us those opportunities. And Father, we ask you to be with those families who need you right now, especially the Harris family. We ask you to support them and encourage them and let them just feel your love right now. Father, help all of us to do your will, to learn from the situations that we're in and come out better on the other side of this where we trust you more, and we believe in you more. Father, we're so thankful for your son who gives us the hope that we all need. It's in his name we pray, amen. All right, guys, I look forward to seeing and hearing from you soon. But until then, Noah, let's get started. Living in a dark world can be extremely frightening. Thoughts like not knowing what to do or where to go can leave us filled with worry and anxiety. But we need to remember that God does not want us to be worried or anxious. He does not want us filled with those two things. But what he wants us to be filled with is joy. And so this evening, during our devotional time, we're going to be looking at how joy is found when we stay true to our words. But before we jump into that devotional thought and that topic, I would like for us to play a quick game. This is a game that uh, our youth group plays uh, on occasions. It's called Two Truths and One Lie. This is how the game works. I'm going to say three statements, three sentences of some sorts, and two of them will be truths, and one statement will be a lie. And it's going to be your job to discover which one of those statements is a lie. So here we go, an example round, okay? So th this one does not count. This is an example. I am married. I live in Alabama. And I'm a huge Alabama football fan. Roll Tide. And now I'm going to wait a few seconds. And it's going to be your job to discover which one of those three statements is a lie. And if you would have guessed that I'm a huge Alabama football fan, well, then you would be right. Then you would have won because that was my lie. I am not a huge Alabama football fan. Boomer Sooner. Okay, so here we go. Round one, this is, this is it, okay? I have two sisters, I hate dogs, and I am the baby of the family. Now, which one of those statements is a lie? Do you know? Well, if you guessed that I hate dogs, well, then you are correct. That is my lie. I absolutely love dogs. Now, if you missed it, if, if you didn't get that right, that's okay. I'm going to give you one more opportunity. Here we go. Round two. This is for all the mar marbles. This is it. I love the restaurant Fazoli's. Mm. I lived in 
Lafayette, Louisiana, and I lived in Lafette, Tennessee. Do you know which one is a lie? Well, if you would have guessed that I love Fazoli's, the restaurant Fazoli's, well, then you would have gotten it right because I absolutely do not like that restaurant whatsoever. It's not my place. And so there we go. So as human beings, we all struggle with being true to our words. It's easy to tell someone we'll be there for them, but when time comes and they are actually needing our help, it becomes hard to turn those words into actions. But we can find joy when we keep our promises. When we stay true to what we say, there is joy behind that. And we see that in Psalm chapter 32, verse 2. This is what it says. Yes, what joy for those whose record the Lord has cleared of guilt, whose lives are lived in complete honesty. Did you catch the last phrase of verse 2? What joy for those whose lives are lived in complete honesty. You see, there is joy in being honest. When we are honest with other people, when we are honest with ourselves, and when we are honest with God, there is joy. And it makes sense. Think back to a time when you lied to somebody, when you lied to someone. How, how did that make you feel? Remember a time when you did something and you blamed someone else and, and they got into trouble. How did that make you feel? You see, there's a thing called, called guilt. And it's not a great feeling. Uh, you are not a happy person when you are filled with guilt. And you see, David, in, here in Psalm chapter 32, he agrees with, with this thought. And this is what he says in Psalm 32. Yes, what joy for those whose record the Lord has cleared of guilt, whose lives are lived in complete honesty. When I refused to confess my sin, my body wasted away, and I groaned all day long. Day and night, your hand of discipline was heavy on me. My strength evaporated like water in the summer heat. Finally, I confessed all my sins to you and stopped trying to hide my guilt. I said to myself, I will confess my rebellion to the Lord, and you forgave me. All my guilt is gone. When David refused to be honest, he states that his body wasted away. He groaned all day long. And we see that there is no joy in being dishonest. I would like to issue another challenge this week. In the comment section, I would like for you to share a name or a group of names of people who have brought you joy in your life. We really appreciate you listening. Thank you so much.